So this is the retaining wall module that we have opened to the RAM element. Now the RAM element has got a very good interface for complete uh, analysis and design of retaining wall. And uh, this retaining wall is, uh, is, is uh, handled by a separate package within the RAM element and it's a separate module and it's a complete solution. It's not like only it will perform the analysis but it will perform the analysis of this structure and it will also provide you all those parameters to define for complete design solution. Okay, let's see what we can do and I hope that you'll really find it very much in interesting and very much helpful for your project. Okay, now in uh, RAM element, uh, in this retaining wall module, you can find uh, the different codes. Uh, you can see here mostly the American code, uh, then British code, and we have other international design code. Let's see what we have. Uh, you can see here, let me drag it. Yeah, the, most of the versions of American code, that is the ACI codes are available, including the latest one. And uh, there we have uh, two different options to define the cross-sectional profile of the retaining wall. Uh, the mostly which is used are uh, the two different uh, shapes. One is the stepped one and another is the tapered one. And uh, the wall type that we use generally are uh, cantilevered. That means uh, the bottom one is restrained and top one is free to move and another is the restrained one. Uh, so you can choose any of them. And uh, in this case, let me uh, choose the cantilever one. And uh, this time, let me choose, uh, you can choose any of them, uh, stepped one or the tapered one. So if I choose the tapered one like this, you can see this tapered profile would be generated. Okay, so let's uh, roll it back to the stepped one. So in this uh, uh, video, I will just uh, handle this stepped one. So next is the base, uh, base of this retaining wall. Uh, the base means this, uh, the one which is already embedded inside the soil, uh, including the two and the hill portion of the slab. Now in this base uh, option, you can find different other uh, criteria by which you can control the geometric configuration, geometric dimensions and all. For example, here you can uh, choose the base depth. And also the good part is here you can also consider the shear key. Uh, that's a very powerful property we have uh, in this module by which you can also define the location, the dimension of the shear key. Yeah, you can exclude this if you don't want. Next, we can control the number of layers of these step profiles. For example, we have three different tiers or two different tiers. So you can just define the number of uh, blocks and uh, accordingly, you can control its uh, uh, dimension by defining its geometry. So here you can see I have just defined uh, as a one. So there is a single uh, step for profile. If I define it as a three, then you could see that three different, uh, okay, let me, do. yes, three different uh, blocks we have. So accordingly, you can find the listing of all those blocks where you can expand and define its uh, material and its geometric property. So in this case, I'm just uh, putting the standard one that is two, a very simple one. Uh, then we can define some of the soil properties, soil information, uh, like the backfill information, uh, like if it is sloped or if it is uh, having a uh, complete uh, horizontal plane. Uh, if it is completely, uh, you know, in the horizontal plane, then you just define the angle, but you can also control the slope angle of this backfill. 
and uh, then you can also define the number of layers of the soil that's a very good part because uh, this retaining wall where it is situated uh, the just uh, run through different layers of the soil uh, for example on the top part you have a bit of coarse soil and if you are going down you might come across some of the finer or some uh, some some other uh, type of soils so you can accordingly define the number of layers number of uh, strata of the soils and uh, you can also define its uh, further information so i'm just skipping the slope angle of this backfill as 15 and then you have another option to define the water level now this is a very important parameter and uh, there are several users who are very uh, very strictly require this uh, condition because uh, they are looking for designing the retaining world which is having um, the water table beneath its profile so the soil layers yeah we have uh, three different soil layers uh, i think yeah we can see there's uh, three or two no two 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 different soil layers we have defined so you can see soil layer one soil layer two where you can define its depth its uh, unit weight uh, if it is a cohesive or cohesionless uh, then you can define its internal friction angle. These are mostly the geotechnical properties. You can define it there. So these are some of the additional information you can define. For example, the soil bearing capacity, which is one of the most important property you have to define. Uh, the saturated unit weight of soil, then you have uh, also the choice to define the subgrade uh, modulus of subgrade reaction so you can define it basically the modulus of subgrade reaction is mostly used when you're considering some soil spring behavior just beneath your foundation now this is very much important because we here in ram element are not solving it considering a rigid structure uh, we are rigorously solving with the finite element formulation. So basically we are considering these uh, structural part behaving as a flexible uh, element and accordingly we are formulating the finite element model. So the soil subgrade modulus is also important if you want to properly define the soil structure interaction. So this is where you can define the water uh, table depth below the foundation base now the loading part now uh, this loading part is the most important part I would say because all you need to do is to define the proper loading and accordingly the structure would respond so here you can see uh, as this is a retaining wall it is subjected to mostly um, the lateral earth pressure so uh, you have to define those information like if you have any actual dead load, uh, if there is any lateral dead load, what is its uh, magnitude, lateral live load, its magnitude, and everything would be also displayed in this illustration. So next, you can define the combination rules. So here you can define both the strength as well as the service uh, combination rules. Uh, so accordingly, program would first uh, calculate the dimension based on the strength requirement, sorry, the service requirement. And then it will go for designing the structure, calculating the reverse and all uh, based on the strength requirement. So we also have the option to optimize. Uh, basically what it do, it will select the most optimum set of reinforcement from your data that you have already set. Uh, this is the data where you can just select the 
available reinforcement and program would accordingly pick the reinforcement for you. So now let me fire the design. Now you can see uh, it has already performed the design and just at the bottom portion you can see there are three small squares, not square exactly, three small uh, rectangle uh, kind of uh, dark spar and you can see the status here. Uh, right now you can see this, the color has turned red so basically it will indicate that there is some issue. Uh, the structure is not good enough to handle the load. So let's see what is wrong in this structure, what I have to change so that I can get it passed. So we can see the report and this will provide you the detailed design report. Now let's scroll down. Okay, here you can see the status and some red colored uh, information that would show you the reason behind this uh, failure and that is uh, something like insufficient safety factor for bearing capacity. Okay, so you can just uh, change the safety factor from the inputs and uh, just uh, keep on changing the values and you can get it passed. But also we need to just check that if the dimensions are good enough or not. So yes, uh, let's also check with the different dimensions. Uh, maybe I can increase the uh, toe length and keep on checking. So I'm just uh, doing some trial and error procedure to check the right dimensions because uh, the higher the toe length, higher would be its uh, resistance against settlement and also the overturning. So looks like it's turned green. Uh, there is a uh, also a small, you can see, in between the first uh, rectangle and the last rectangle in the status bar, there is another uh, rectangle at the middle. Uh, this would report you with the yellow color. That means uh, your structure is good enough, but there is some warning. Red means it's not good enough either in uh, strength as well as the serviceability condition both the strength criteria has not met and also the sizing that is the serviceability calculation is not good enough if it is yellow that means uh, yes uh, for strength consideration is good it won't fail but for some geometric consideration there is some issues you need to just revisit the model and try to fix them green means it's good for both the serviceability uh, as well as the strength uh, criteria of uh, the geometrical consideration geometrical requirements as well as the strength requirements both are good enough so then we have some advanced option if you just click that would uh, provide you some option to define some advanced uh, inputs like uh, the calculation for the active earth pressure there are different uh, methods uh, we know, like Renkine's method, Bosnick's method, and so on. These are mostly, uh, you know, some geotechnical uh, theory. Based on this, uh, we can just calculate. And you can also find some other different information that you can define in this advanced tool. Okay, so then we have some smart tool. Here you can see suggest dimension. Now here you can see I have done some trial and error procedure to just adjust the dimension to just check which is the right dimension for me to get the uh, entire structure passed. Um, but you can also ask the program to get some suggested dimension. Uh, program would just go through its uh, different set of iterations internally and you, it will suggest the good dimensions that should work for you. So you can also try this one, suggest dimension, but I would just advise you just not necessary that every time you click on the suggest dimension, it will give you the right dimension. You can just manually just play around and tweak around, just fiddling here and there, would just give some fine tuning in the result.
so here you can see the uh, shear force diagram of this uh, retaining wall base against the different load combinations and this is the main UI of RAM element from here only we have launched the retaining wall module now basically when we are firing the design all the calculation um, based on which the forces and all are determined are done by the uh, analysis engine of RAM element and RAM element is a very powerful finite element analysis engine so basically it will form an analytical model you can see here it's shown by just the line diagram and it will solve this idealized model analytically and uh, determine the forces and all so after the design is complete you can go to this detailing page here so here you can see both the longitudinal as well as the transverse direction uh, reinforcement uh, detailing so later you can also just uh, modify this uh, detailing layout if you want that okay i want to just uh, make some changes in this detailing pattern you can do that so you can see here that this is a very comprehensive solution for the retaining wall analysis and design in ram element